Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to take a look at the Retroid Pocket 2. This retro gaming device includes two operating systems, including Android and Retroid OS. We're going to unbox it, set it up, and of course, we're going to play a few games as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at the specifications for the Retroid Pocket 2. It has Android 6.0 as well as Retroid OS in a dual boot situation. The CPU is a 4X Cortex A7 at 1.5 GHz. The GPU is an ARM Mali 400 MP2 at 500 MHz. The display is a 3.5 inch IPS display at 640x480. It has 1 GB of LPDDR3 RAM, Wi Fi, is BGNN, so yes, it does have Wi Fi built in and Bluetooth 4.0. It has 8 gigabytes of EMMC onboard storage as well as a 32 gigabyte micro SD card, and the battery is a 4000 milliamp battery which charges in about two and a half hours and will give you about five hours of playtime. Let's open the box for the Retroid Pocket 2. So here we go. It took a little while to ship it, probably about two weeks after the notification was received that I actually received the unit. Of course, it took quite a bit longer before I got that notification, but here's the box and some accessories. So we'll take a look at this package, and inside you have a micro HDMI to standard HDMI cable and an OTG adapter here. So you got USB-C to a standard size USB for plugging in a controller. We'll take a look at that. And here is the box. Very cool. Not much to see really, except on the back here, it shows you what some of the buttons do and the available ports. There's a number of different colors available to you. So you can go check that out. We'll go ahead and open the main box here. And, huh, what's this? Oh, very cool. It's a screen cover. We'll go ahead and apply that in a little bit. Let's see what else is in the box. Yeah, some basic instructions, a little bit about the uh, specifications, so forth, connecting the display. Okay, not a whole lot of stuff there. All right, let's see what else we have here. Looks like uh, a USB type C to a USB type A cable for charging. And of course I ordered the purple unit like I always do. <laughs> the buttons feel okay, but the stick in the lower right is a digital uh, slider type stick and has a lower profile. The top buttons, they feel pretty good. Let's go ahead and remove the micro SD card and see what capacity card we have here. And as expected, it's a 32 gig. Now let's take a closer look at the device itself. Here we have the SD card, the headphone jack, and over here on the front you have home, select, and start. And over here you have your ABXY, and here you have your L and ZL instead of 2L, I don't know why. Uh, your HDMI, your USB-C for charging, your volume down and up, and your power, and your R, and your ZR, whatever that is. Anyway, on the back, you've got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. It charges in about two and a half hours and should give you about five hours of playtime. It took 38.5 seconds to boot. So yeah, booting is rather slow. In this segment, I'm gonna use a tool called Disk Genius. So here's the download link for that. And click download. Now this is an optional step, but something I want to make you aware of. If you take a look at the micro SD, this is the original micro SD. You can see it says RD, which is your removable drive. It shows 30 gigabytes, and this is the contents of that. And the capacity here is at 29 gig. And the interesting thing is, it's used space 
is 26.5 so you only have 2.7 gigs available for your games which is not very much so I decided to use this tool to back up the partition so I'm going to click backup partition and select the image file and I'm just going to give it a name I created a directory called handhelds and go ahead and give the partition file a name of retroid pocket 2 underscore ori dot pmf okay so from at this point I am ready to go ahead and back up the partition so I'm going to click start and be sure and read all these messages here just click OK and there we go now we're backing up the partition and now once the backup is complete click the complete button and there we go now you can remove the micro SD card from your computer in my case I chose to use a 128 gigabyte micro SD for the restore process and this is going to be my new card for the Retroid Pocket 2. So here you can see it's 116 gig that's showing up here. So I'm going to right click on the removable disk and go to the option to restore the partition from an image file. And then I'll select my image file. And it's this one here, the one we just backed up. Click open. Be very careful that the target partition is your removable drive and it is the correct one and the correct size. And once it is, click start and go ahead and read the prompts here. And once you do that, click OK. And OK again. And then the restore process will complete. Again, we'll click the complete button. And if we look over here, we can now see that all our directories exist on the new micro SD card. Now I'll switch over to Explore, and we'll go to the ROMs directory, and I'll show you how to copy a few games. So here's all the directories that are pre-configured for you. I'm going to double-click in the Atari subdirectory, and go to 2600, and I'm simply going to drag and drop some games into the directory. And that's pretty much it. You just repeat the same process for all of the other systems that you want to copy. The first time you power on the unit, it'll boot up into Android 6.0, which, yes, it's a very old version of Android. However, that's what's on here. In the future, there may be a version 8.1 that's released. Anyway, to enter mouse mode, hold down the home button for about two seconds. I also noticed a little drifting here in the mouse cursor. You may have noticed that as well. If you press the D-pad to the right, it'll slow the cursor down. And if you press it to the left, it'll speed it up. So this allows you to adjust the cursor speed to what works best for you. All right, so now I'm going to double tap the A button and hold down the A and move the joystick on the left, and that will allow you to scroll. It's much like using a touch screen, even though we don't have a touch screen. <laughs> to exit mouse mode, just hold down the home button for about two seconds, and now you can use the D-pad to navigate the icons. One thing you'll want to do is go down here to the very bottom, go to settings, and then from there, you'll want to set up your Wi-Fi. So just press A here and select your Wi-Fi and enter the password for it. Next, you'll want to go to the Play Store and go ahead and log in there so you can download new applications to your Retroid Pocket 2. As far as emulators, there are a number of them pre-installed. For instance, we have Classic Boy, Flycast, Main for Droid, Moopin 64, n 64 Neodroid, PPSSPP, RetroArc, ScumVM, and SteamLink. And of course, you can add new ones. In order to get you up and running quickly, let's go down to the very bottom and we'll select the Toolbox icon. If I scroll all the way down to the very bottom, you'll see Install Retroid Pocket App. So we're going to press A at, on this, but I've actually got it installed already. So I'm going to go ahead and select Retroid and it's going to ask if you want to reboot, say OK. And then once it reboots, you'll be in the Retroid Pocket operating system. And here, basically, it makes it a lot easier in order to load games. If you press to the left or right here, you can select different consoles. You can see down at the bottom, it's showing these are PSP games. And if I move to the left, you can see the systems are changing, MAME, FBA, and so forth. 
while Retroid OS makes it easy to navigate to your games and play them, it does come at a cost, and that cost is configurability. It's not configurable at all. If you want to tweak settings, Android 6.0 is your best bet. Well, we'll go ahead and launch a game here just so you can take a look. I don't even know what game this is. The title said one thing, but the startup splash screen said something else, so <laughs> go figure. Anyway, to exit the game, press Home, and then press B to exit, and it'll return back to the launcher here, and we'll load up a Dreamcast game. It claims that I'm launching Turtle Dove, but I highly doubt that's the name of the game, but maybe it is. <laughs> I've never played it before. Anyway, we'll go ahead and check it out. And as you can hear, the audio is not super clear. A little bit of stuttering. I have no idea what the frame rate is because Retroid OS does not allow me to set the frame rate. So it's visible, at least not that I've seen so far. Next, I want to show you a pretty cool feature. If you move down here and press the Home button and hold it for a few seconds, you'll get this menu. And from here, you can scroll down until you see Wi-Fi. So you want to go ahead and enable Wi-Fi and connect to your Wi-Fi network. Once you do that, we'll go ahead and go back. And to go back, you want to press the Y button. So we'll press Y and then move down to where it says Enter Game Market. Now that we're connected to Wi-Fi, we can now browse different games that are available for download. And yes, you can download them directly from your Retroid Pocket 2. So here we're just browsing the download chart and we'll go ahead and go back by pressing Y again and go to the popular chart, press A. And then from here, you can view the popular chart and download any of these games that you see here. And we'll go to increasing popular chart. <laughs> that looks pretty similar. You can search for games. You can also browse here by the categories or particular systems. There's 2,300 pre-installed games on this unit, so uh, there's quite a few to choose from already on the device. Now we're going to switch over to the Android 6.0 operating system. So we're going to press A here, and it'll reboot. In just a moment, we're going to start up the gameplay, but first off, I want to show you a few things. This OTG adapter that came with the unit, I'm connecting up the receiver for my controller. And what we're going to do is also hook up the mini HDMI cable and hook that up to my external monitor here, the lapel I just reviewed. For some of the gameplay, I'm going to use this controller and for other parts, I'll use the device itself. And as you can see, the wireless controller works just great here in navigating the menu. Now let's play. Round one, fight! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
I hope you enjoyed this look at the Retroid Pocket 2. I do want to let you know I am starting a page with my notes and all kinds of information on the Retroid Pocket 2. Right now it's a little light on content, but that'll change. There's so much more I could show you, such as Dig. Uh, there was an update for it just recently, which uh, is pretty cool. It lets you navigate all the systems and the collections of games and so forth. It's really pretty cool. If you'd like to see more coverage on the Retroid Pocket 2, please comment below and let me know what you want to see, and that'll help drive future videos on this pretty cool device. I think for $80, it's, it's not a bad buy, honestly. Uh, it can handle a lot of systems that other devices can't. I think initially the device is very confusing to use. Uh, it took me a little while to figure it out, and uh, that's why I'm making this video, to help you. <laughs> Uh, the Android portion, there's a lot of configuration in terms of the emulators and so forth. Uh, Retroid OS makes things a lot easier, but then you don't have the flexibility that you have in Android. So it's really up to you which you prefer. If you're a tinker, you're going to go with Android. If you're someone who just wants to have fun playing some games real quick, you'll probably want to boot into Retroid OS. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I shall talk to you very soon.